So um, please allow me to uh, start and uh, speak. Uh, in, in Vietnamese, uh, we, we will have cả các quý vị đại biểu, uh, các quý vị uh, đến tham dự hội thảo về uh, COVID-19. Thì chủ đề của hội thảo ngày hôm nay là COVID-19. And our theme today is experience sharing on recovery efforts post COVID-19. Trước khi vào chúng ta thì một số các lưu ý về hướng dẫn. Before we start, we would like to remind you of uh, the features on Zoom. So we will automatically turn off your microphone and or your cameras to avoid background noises during the webinar. In terms of language selection and Q&A, you can have a look at the screen to see the further instructions. So in our webinar today, interpret simultaneous interpretation service is provided. So if you want to listen to the Vietnamese interpretation, please select the interpretation icon and select uh, French. French means Vietnamese due to technical configurations. So please select French if you want to listen to the Vietnamese interpretation. So now shall we start? To kick off our webinar today, I would like to introduce our participants Dr. Luman Ang, Vice Director General of Water Resource Directorate, and also the Director of Answer Was. Uh, Mr. Van Ang will have uh, will deliver his opening remarks. Lớp da nước sạch và vệ sinh môi trường nên uh, tôi xin phép được uh, mời đại diện. Uh... All right, uh, since Mr. Van Anh is not here yet, I would like to introduce Dr. Nguyễn Hồng Tiến, the president of the Vietnam Sewerage Association, to deliver his opening remarks. À, kính thưa các quý vị đại biểu trong chương trình hợp tác giữa hội cấp thoát nước Việt Nam. Ladies and gentlemen, within the framework of the partnership between the Australian Water Association and the Vietnam Sewerage Association, we're organizing this seminar today on experience sharing on recovery efforts post COVID-19. So this webinar is funded by the Australian government. Uh, on behalf of our association, I would like to extend my gratitude to the government Australia for funding this webinar. I would like to extend our gratitude to the uh, Australia Water Associations and those working in the water sector 
of the two countries and also the speakers delivering their presentations today. I would like to wish you a fruitful webinar. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Tien. Next on the agenda, I would like to introduce the uh, director of the Vietnam Wa the Australia Water Association, Madam Corinne, to deliver her opening remarks. Hello. Firstly, let me congratulate Vietnam on your exemplary response to COVID-19. Your country has been a global leader and the envy of many countries across the world. Providing reliable, safe water, sanitation and sewage services is essential. It is the most important part of the preventative public health system, protects the environment and provides water for other essential uses. As a result, water utility staff are essential service workers and their work has to continue for the well-being of the community. As a global community of water practitioners, we are learning fast about how COVID-19 pandemic is affecting organisations providing water supply, sanitation and sewage services. Australian utilities have now developed business continuity and contingency plans in response to COVID-19 to ensure they remain well prepared to continue delivering an essential service. Australian utilities are also working closely with their customers to ensure they remain connected to their water suppliers during this period of hardship. There are many common challenges our water sectors face as we strive to continue to provide safe water to our customers and there is much we can learn from each other. I am proud that AWA is involved in connecting our country's water sectors to share experiences on their preparation, response and recovery approaches to support the continu continuity of this essential service and the health and safety of water and wastewater operators. Today's webinar is part of a broader program to share knowledge between our water sectors on COVID-19. It also builds a platform of work to connect our water sectors and share knowledge to improve water service delivery, including water utility improvement program, which today's speakers have been involved in. Thank you to AWA's partners in Vietnam, the VWSA, the NCER, WAWS, for your enduring partnership over the years. I must also thank the Australian Government and Australian Water Partnership for their ongoing support in connecting our water sectors. Today's webinar is just the start of discussions between our water operators. Please contact um, any of our organisations if you wish to get involved in our COVID-19 program or the broader program of knowledge sharing between our water sectors. Thank you. Xin cảm ơn bà Corinne ạ. Và để tiếp theo chương trình Thank you so much, Ms. Corinne, for your remarks. And now to continue the agenda, may I invite the representative from the donor agency? The Australian Embassy, Vietnam and World, uh, and uh, Australian Water Partnership. So first of all, may I invite Mr. Rory Hunter, the program manager from the Australian Water Partnership, with your remarks? Australian Water Partnership. So we work a uh, very, hang on, I'm just trying to move, ah, oh, there we go. Ah, uh, yeah, so we have a number of uh, activities in water resources management across the Indo-Pacific. Uh, so you can see there we work in the Mekong region and we have some uh, activities in Vietnam. So our activity portfolio in Vietnam at the moment, we have our ongoing work uh, with the water utilities in Vietnam and the Australian Water Association. So that's our Vietnam Rural Water Utility Improvement Program. And we also provide uh, technical and advisory support um, in the irrigation area. So we provide support to the World Bank uh, Mekong Delta, Integrated Climate Resilience and Sustainable Livelihoods Project. And we also support the ADB's water efficiency improvement in drought affected provinces. So our focus in Vietnam is on water utilities, but also on water efficiency and working in the irrigation space, where Australia has a lot of experience managing water scarcity. So we have 60 activities and a number of these are in Vietnam. So we had to assess what the impacts of those activities are with COVID-19. 
obviously we couldn't have our experts traveling over uh, and we also couldn't host um, delegates from Vietnam to come to Australia for study tours. Uh, I know a number of you are going to be going to Oswater uh, this year, but now we're extending that so that you can attend next year instead. So some of our mitigation measures, um, we had to adapt a lot of our activities. Like the webinar today, a lot of our focus has moved to online and using information and communication technology. Then we'll, after the risks were managed, we looked at the, our, what we're calling our pivot to COVID-19. And that was where we thought our activities could contribute to not just the COVID-19 response, but also the economic recovery in the longer term. And water and, and functional water utilities plays a key role in economic recovery, which a lot of the countries, including Vietnam, are now transitioning to uh, in response to the COVID-19 pandemic. So we thought that support to water utilities is an area where we, where we knew we could have an immediate impact. Uh, so we had a, a discussion with the Australian Water Association and also the water utilities in Vietnam, Cambodia and Indonesia that are involved in our twinning programs. So we, we wanted to work with you know, those key essential workers on the front line who are maintaining water supply and, and wastewater services in those countries. So we have our water utility programs in, in Vietnam Indonesia and Cambodia, delivered by the Australian Water Association. We also work with the Pacific Water and Wastewater Association, uh, who represents 30 water utilities across the Pacific, and that work's been delivered by Hunter H2O. Uh, it's very important work, and I'd like to just uh, acknowledge um, the quick and effective response of AWA, the Vietnam Water Supply Association, and the water utilities in Australia and Vietnam in this very quick response to um, sharing information on the response to COVID-19 because Australia has been able to learn a lot from Vietnam through this process as well. So we, we do thank your inputs and we thank you for joining the webinar today. We're actually using this um, to pilot what we're calling the Australian Telewater Network. Uh, so at the moment we're focusing on the water utility programs but in the future, uh, you know, but there's some uncertainty about international travel. We still want to be able to provide Australian entities in the water centre uh, across the Pacific, in the Mekong region in Vietnam. So we've been testing our different technologies and how we might be able to provide technical assistance um, without being able to visit those countries. And there's been some interesting work so that you know a lot of our workers have been joining in virtual field trips and meeting on water, uh, using webinars and really connecting a lot with our partners in Vietnam. So um, I'll finish up there, but I just want to say thanks a lot for um, including us in the webinar uh, today. And we hope this is the first of many. And I look forward to hearing about some of your areas. Um, thank you very much. Yes, thank you very much, Dr. Rory. So, the next item will be the first uh, presentation for the webinar today, and it will be the presentation. Sorry. Uh, Due to the technical problem, Dr. Daniel Deere, who should have been the first presentation, cannot connect to us yet. And that's why I would like to invite Dr. Nguyễn Việt Anh, the head of the Technology and Science Department from the VUARS of Vietnam, with the presentation. So the floor is your now, Dr. Việt Anh.
Mọi người nhìn thấy cái màn hình chưa? So, can you see the slide on the screen? Okay, that's fine. So, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to speak in Vietnamese. So, um, uh, according to the topic that has been assigned by the organizer of the webinar, then I will be talking about the challenges caused by the COVID-19 pandemic to the companies in the water sector. So, uh, because uh, we couldn't hear from the first uh, guest speaker in the agenda, so I just uh, want to uh, brief you a little bit on the virus SARS-CoV-2 uh, and um, its impact on the companies working in the water sector. And you know that on the earth, viruses uh, seems to be the uh, most uh, populating uh, species on the earth. And as far as we know, there can be 10 billions of billions of viruses living on the earth. And with such a huge and enormous population, the viruses that can be found everywhere on the earth. However, uh, in the environment with the strong oxidization, um, the viruses uh, will be, you know, more difficult to survive. That's why in the water environment, the viruses may not uh, survive if we can have the safe water supply, that is with different barriers in order to uh, eliminate uh, the pathogens and the germs. Uh, however, viruses can be found a lot in the faces of the patients or of the sick people, for example, in the urine, uh, uh, in the other types of wastes. So again, the viruses can be found in the waste water. Uh, but however, luckily that we have the technology for wastewater treatment and uh, through the wastewater treatment process, then the viruses uh, can be damaged. More precisely, the organic uh, structure of the viruses can be damaged uh, through the wastewater treatment process. However, uh, in the sewage uh, sluices or uh, at the uh, pumping stations or at the aerosol, when um, the waste water is not fully collected and is not fully uh, treated, then there is a very high uh, presence, the very high level of presence of the viruses. So as we could see in March, April and May 2020 from Hong Kong and France and the Netherlands or Belgium and many other countries, they have found the um, evidence of the viruses in the sewage system. And now uh, if um, they have done some analysis of the virus contained in the waste, in the waste water in order to uh, identify the risk and the likelihood of the epidemic. So for the viruses, especially from COVID-19 or SARS-CoV-2, uh, virus, uh, one hour or two hour early detection and warning would be very meaningful in order to isolate the infected people, uh, you know, to uh, uh, damage the pathogens. So I know that from the experience in Australia, in some regions, the police officers uh, could manage to fight out the drugs by analyzing the samples of waste water so that then they can isolate the region where the drug users were living. So it would be less costly than doing so many different investigations or the other kinds of activities in order to fight out the drug dealers and the drug users. So uh, analyzing the samples of wastewater can have different meanings for different purposes, especially during the time of the pandemic. We may save a lot of time in order to isolate the um, patients and the, uh, the infected people. And as you can see from this table, the very last row in the table, then the virus SARS in the SARS virus in 2003 were found uh, to be uh, sustained up to two weeks in the wastewater at the hospitals. Uh, and at two degrees Celsius temperature, they could survive for two days. 
Um, so these were the evidences showing that uh, wastewater was really an environment for the viruses to survive and even to develop well. So now let's talk about the challenges to the companies working in the water sector. So first of all, uh, technically speaking, we know that um, our water sources are always facing the risk of being contaminated due to the uh, waste uh, uh, disposal. And um, then uh, because of um, the use of the personal pumps or household pumps in the households, then the water may be transmitted um, uh, from the uh, top uh, floor of the house to the lower uh, level floors of the house without any control or any kind of the measures for prevention of uh, contamination. Uh, and uh, for the high-rise building or the blocks of flats or at the stations and hospitals, however, there is the centralized water supply system with some control and management, the risk of management actually, but there's still very high level of risk of contamination if the uh, management of water supply is not done properly. And so we see the highest risk uh, uh, in the... Um, quite a crowded area such as the uh, hospitals or the um, stations, bus stations, for example. And um, there is also the risk with the rural water supply scheme. So in terms of the challenges now, um, you know that the water supply companies and the service providers have uh, to maintain the 24 hours um, for seven days a week water supply services even during the pandemic time and during the pandemic time the water companies have to um, change their shifting uh, arrangements for example uh, let's say um, uh, arrange uh, different uh, uh, teams of uh, workers to uh, work at different uh, uh, times during the day or uh, to arrange the uh, staff um, uh, to replace anyone who has been infected and goes to the quarantine. And uh, another challenge is that many um, users of water now are facing the bankruptcy or at least they are in the very difficult uh, financial constraints because they, uh, for example, the hotels or restaurants, which are the big users of water, now they cannot um, operate because there's no demand or because they are under the quarantine uh, order. So they have got their revenues very badly affected by the pandemic with the COVID-19 also leads to the other challenges which are also occurring at the same time, for example, the salinity intrusion or drought or the other incidents with the water supply equipment or pumping stations. So the challenges are double or even triple. Um, so um, we also see another challenge is that the water companies have uh, to increase the amount of chemicals and uh, they have uh, to ensure that the workers who do the maintenance work are safe and well because uh, during the pandemic time there is a higher risk of contamination with the wastewater so the workers uh, who have to maintain the wastewater treatment system would be at the higher risk. And in Vietnam, there's also the habit of reusing the wastewater for, let's say, farming or gardening. Especially in the north of Vietnam, at the downstream area, people may use the wastewater in order to raise their fish in the ponds or to water their veggies in the gardens. So if the wastewater is not yet um, treated properly, then there will be a lot of the pathogens that can enter the environment and also um, now they can be the very um, uh, important source of contamination uh, from uh, the uh, you know faces and uh, the human wastes and um, we should also mention the other constraints in terms of the awareness and knowledge about the epidemics about the virus itself and um, the route of transmissions of the viruses. 
And in terms of the spiritual、uh, challenge, we see that many people in the societies are feeling very worried, and、uh, they may be under the、um, uh, uh, very、uh, you know they can be threatened. Yeah, fear of the virus, and、um, they do not feel comfortable when they have to wear the、uh, PPE, very heavy PPE, the、um, personal protective equipment when they work in the hazardous environment. And、uh, we should also mention the more general challenges in every region when we are living in the pandemic.、Uh, Sometimes you know that people say that the viruses are invisible, so it means that we are facing the invisible challenge, and、uh, sometimes、uh, we cannot、uh, distinguish the infected with the non-infected people, and we can only know a person has been infected or not、uh, through testing, and whereas the time for testing is quite long. And so far, there hasn't been any vaccine or any, you know, special、uh, drug or medicine、uh, to treat、uh, the people who are infected with COVID-19. So that's another challenge which is common to everywhere and to every person. And nobody can be sure what will happen, to,、uh, you know, tomorrow or the day after tomorrow with this COVID-19. And、uh, the economic、uh, development has been slowed down for a time due to the COVID-19. The production activities that have been, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, ceased or have been、uh, stopped, even in several cases, and many people have lost their jobs. Several companies have been bankrupt, and、uh, the international travel、uh, restrictions are still in place. And、uh, we even, in many places, we are even under the social isolation orders.、Um, so, however, these are the challenges. But you know, the challenges are always going. Uh, apart with the opportunities, so the opportunities here is first of all. Uh, we should use this time in order to do transformation、uh, in terms of、uh, the way we doing management and governance of our operations in the way that we operate the companies, and this is also the time and the opportunity for us、uh, to use the information technology and the other technology and.、Uh, To develop、uh, the scenarios or the、uh, contingency plans, and also to have many other,、uh, you know,、uh, chances to apply、uh, the advanced technology for, let's say, mechanization or maintenance of the sewage system, and the wastewater treatment stations. And plans, and this is also the opportunity to promote the concept of safe, sustainable, and secure water supply. So, in this context, we do not need to spend any penny, but we still、uh, can do the communication and education program with the public in order to raise their awareness on the safety and security when using water, and when discharging the waste water into the environment. So that is the very uh, brief information to, to share with you, and I'm very much expecting to receiving your questions in the Q and A session. Thank you. Xin cảm ơn tiến sĩ Nguyễn Việt Anh ạ. Thank you very much, Doctor Nguyễn Việt Anh. Can you hear me speaking, everyone? All right. Thank you. All right.、Uh, let's move on to the next item on the agenda. Do you have any questions? If you have any questions, please type them in the chat box so that later on we can send your questions to the speakers to respond. If you've got any questions, please type them down. Thank you.、Um, now I would like to introduce 
Dr. Daniel here. Specialized in water quality. He's done a lot of research in this area. He comes from the Water Futures Organization. So the floor is now yours, Daniel. Dan, can you share your screen and start? I'm trying to find the share screen, but the share screen isn't currently operating for some reason. Okay, so I have your slide here. Uh, that's all right if I can uh, show it and share sure. to everyone for you. Thank you. Okay. And then let me know when you want to move to the next slide. Okay, can you can you see it, Dan? That's working. Yes, sir. thank you very much. Okay. So we're going to give a short overview of the main features of the virus and the main implications for the water industry. And then the following presenters will give more detailed examples of the implications for the water industry. So the next slide will show us the a simple picture of the virus. The main feature of the virus of interest to the water industry is the surrounding lipid layer, which appears gray in this picture. And this makes the virus able to stick to surfaces, able to form flux in wastewater and drinking water treatment. And this means the virus is more able to be removed than many other kinds of virus. The other interesting feature is the genetic information, the genes, the RNA inside the virus. And we can use this to detect the virus, even if it's not able to be infectious. So on the next image, I'll show you some conceptual drawing. This image was actually prepared very recently in a journal paper to show how coronavirus could potentially impact the water industry. It can come from sewage discharge and then be transported through rivers into drinking water supply, into farmland where water is used. So there is a possible impact of the virus on drinking water and on recycling of wastewaters for irrigation. But fortunately, the evidence is that this virus, because of its physical structure, is quite easy to treat and remove using conventional systems. So the next slide explains this conceptually. The standards for wastewater treatment and the standards for drinking water treatment are based on very strong viruses. And the viruses we set these, these standards for are the fecal oral viruses that cause gut infections. And these viruses live for a long time in water and wastewater. They can live for over a year in water and wastewater they are not sticky, so they can easily be mobilized in groundwater and through filters, and they can resist disinfection. So we have set our water and wastewater treatment systems and sanitation systems to manage those kinds of viruses. 
One of the most well-known of these viruses is polio virus. And there are many others, hepatitis virus and rotavirus, for example. All these viruses are more easily transmitted by water. Whereas the COVID-19 virus is primarily from the throat and the lungs, and it's quite vulnerable and quite sticky. It dies quite quickly at the normal temperature of sewage and water in Vietnam, it will die within days rather than the months that some viruses can survive for. So on the next slide, we give some examples of reference viruses. So the World Health Organization sets treatment requirements based on the most numerous and infectious virus and the most resistant and mobile virus. So we use norovirus and rotavirus as the most numerous and infectious to work out what the treatment needs must be. And then we use the most resistant and the most mobile virus, which is usually adenovirus or Coxsackie B5 virus or hepatitis A virus to set the treatment ob objectives. So for example, if you have a UV disinfection or chlorine disinfection system, the requirements for that system are based on much more robust viruses than COVID-19 virus. And the treatment needs are based on much more numerous viruses than COVID-19 virus. And that means we don't need to change our treatment. We don't need to change how we manage water and sanitation for this virus. So the next slide is a, a simple summary of this. The coronavirus is less numerous compared to the ones that are normally associated with fecal transmission, less infectious, less easily mobilized, more easy to disinfect, and therefore we don't need to change our processes. So that's the good news. But the next slide we can give example of some of the bad news. So the bad news is based on SARS-1 in 2003, there was clear evidence that it is theoretically possible to catch a, co a coronavirus from sewage in unusual circumstances. The image on the left-hand side is from the Center for Health Protection in Hong Kong. And they require building owners to every week pour water into the U-traps that sit at the bottom of the bathrooms, the washrooms in buildings. And they do this because in 2003, the air vents sucked coronavirus from sewage into the air and caused hundreds of SARS illnesses and some deaths. So we know from this that it is theoretically possible for the virus to spread. The same is true of other viruses. So we don't need to change our practices, but we do need to enforce our good practices. So I'll give a few examples of the indirect impacts. So the next slide will give a quick summary. So the good news is we don't need to change what we do, but the bad news is there is a possible risk. So we need to be able to prove we have it under control. Now I'll talk briefly about the indirect implications for coronavirus. Even though the coronavirus isn't spread through water and wastewater under normal circumstances, there are major indirect implications for the virus and how it impacts water services. So the next slide gives an example of the uses of water. If you look at the guidance for controlling coronavirus, it tells us to drink safe water, to use sanitation to remove waste, to wash our hands, 
to clean services, to clean clothes, to clean food, wash food. So all of those things need So if we compromise our water supply, we can't maintain safe water. And water services are also used for many other essential services. Think of all the things water is used for. Imagine if we couldn't use water anymore. So this means that as Corinne Cheeseman said at the start of this seminar, the work of water and sanitation workers is essential and has to continue even despite the challenges we face to work, to move around in our environments. The water and sanitation workers cannot be locked down in their houses. They have to come out and do their jobs. So the next slide gives examples of some of the challenges. We have problems with workers being unavailable. Perhaps they are ill or perhaps they're looking after people who are ill or perhaps they can't attend work because of fear. We have problems with uh, failing infrastructure because we cannot get people to maintain the infrastructure because they can't reach the site for safety reasons. There have been some supply chain problem with chemicals and materials not being able to be shipped in because of aircraft and shipping restrictions. Then we have fears from the public. The public are afraid of drinking water or they are afraid of swimming in the environment water, or afraid of, of eating food that has been irrigated with recycled wastewater. So now we'll hear some more presentations from other presenters that will give examples of their experiences. And these are some links to some useful guidelines. These ones are um, in English. They're also, as you know, the Australian Water Association have, have some Vietnamese examples that were shown earlier right, in the earlier slides. So now we hand over to the next speaker. Thank you, Dan. Xin cảm ơn uh, Dr. Dan ạ. À, xin phép mọi người là quý vị. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, if you have any questions, uh, please type your questions into the chat box. The chat box. We will uh, get the questions from the chat box and we'll uh, refer the questions to the speakers. So next on the agenda, we'd like to invite Mr. Robin No, the first secretary of the Australian Embassy in Vietnam, who is, uh, you know, the donor for the event with his remarks. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you all for attending this important event. We can hear you, Robin. Great. Uh, well, thank you very much um, for uh, having us join this uh, event. Um, and my apologies that uh, we are not uh, able to join via the regular Zoom um, app. We've been trying multiple times over the last uh, hour or so to join the call via Zoom on different devices and um, none of them have worked, unfortunately. Uh, but if there's one thing that COVID-19 um, has taught us all, I think it's that uh, we all need to be a bit resilient and a bit adaptable to the circumstances. Um, so, uh, nonetheless, we're very pleased to be here participating um, via telephone for as long as we can. So, um, let me just start um, belatedly by thanking the VWSA, NSAWAS and AWA for organising this important webinar, um, as well as all of the Vietnamese and Australian water partners who are taking part today. Um, I should say first off for Vietnamese colleagues in the room, um, I am personally um, very grateful uh, for the incredible job that Vietnam has done in implementing its health security response to COVID-19. I kept my own family, young family here during the period of social distancing and as the world started to close its borders and lock down, 
um, and always felt very safe. And uh, Vietnam did a very impressive job in the health security response. And for that, I'm very grateful. Um, despite the progress uh, that both Vietnam and Australia have made in, in addressing the health security um, uh, crisis in the, the short term, um, COVID-19 is most definitely causing wider challenges for the region. And what I wanted to uh, just do for the group is just to situate uh, this discussion that we're having today um, in that wider set of challenges and how the Australian government and the Vietnamese government are working together to uh, support both of our water sectors um, continuing to flourish, of which this seminar is definitely an important part. Um, you know, COVID-19 is really affecting all of us. Um, and it's not just about closing borders or occasionally having to wear masks on airplanes or as we go about our daily business. It's not just about protecting jobs that have been lost in our service sectors like tourism and aviation. And it's not just about trying to find a vaccine. It's actually about all of these things and a lot more. Um, and uh, for the Australian government, um, we're very conscious that COVID-19 has now become the predominant overriding challenge um, not just for Australia and Vietnam, but for the region as a whole. Um, across the region, we're seeing substantial development gains being lost. Um, we're seeing the risk of, uh, or, or vulnerability to other types of diseases or natural disasters increasing. Um, and we're seeing health systems struggle to cope and economies stalling. And even if we're doing well in our two countries, um, the downstream effects of those wider regional challenges are going to continue to affect us all. And that's why uh, on the 29th of May, our Minister for Foreign Affairs and our Minister for International Development announced a new policy, Partnerships for Recovery, uh, which is working to pivot Australia's entire global aid program to support health security, stability and economic recovery in the region. Um, including focusing on the most vulnerable people, um, especially women and girls. Uh, and to operationalise that policy in Vietnam, we're developing a specific COVID-19 development response plan, which is drawing together the full range of Australia's capabilities, um, the private sector, research institutions, government agencies, to contribute to Vietnam's response and recovery in line with the Vietnamese government's own efforts. And in that context, managing the COVID-19 response in the water sector is a very critical part. Um, as I think has been mentioned um, uh, by a number of presenters already, you know, the water sector is one in which not just the economy, but all people rely. And for our respective economic and social security, um, it's a, a, an absolutely critical and essential part of a, of a healthy society. And as all of you know better than I, the water sector faces several challenges, um, both here and in Australia. You know, we need to be able to keep enough people at work to treat and distribute clean water. We need to prevent the spread through wastewater and drinking water of possible infections. We need to keep the staff who are working safe from infection. We need to keep water utilities financially viable, um, even as their sources of revenue um, from, say, industrial production in some cases may be declining. And we also need to keep equipment and other water supply chains open so that we can deliver all of these services. Simply put, as a whole, we just need to keep water clean, reliable and affordable and prevent it being disrupted. And that task for all of us in this room is, is more critical, I think, than ever. Um, and that's why uh, we see uh, seminars like today um, and this opportunity to share as being so critical. Um, obviously, our challenges in Australia and Vietnam are very different, um, often different scales, often different um, uh, specific issues that we need to manage. Um, but we also have a lot in common, um, you know, not least 
the uh, difficulties of remote delivery and working in drought conditions and an experience, I think, of shared adversity sometimes in delivering water, um, which gives us really a lot to share. Um, so I, I will uh, draw to a close there um, because I just wanted to give some context to, to the background and why the Australian government is so supportive of um, events like these. Um, we are really uh, interested to hear what the group has to say about how we can keep our respective water services going through this difficult time. Um, we're also very interested to hear from Vietnamese counterparts um, given the significant challenges to finding new capital, um, given the uh, disruptions um, and declines in revenue from the shift from, um, uh, away from the industrial sector production, um, how Vietnamese utilities can access um, government stimulus package, um, how Vietnamese utilities can continue to, to function here. Um, and indeed, we're looking forward to hearing from our Australian colleagues as well, what your experience has been um, and what, what we can share and indeed what we can bring back from Vietnam to help um, the Australian water sector as well. This discussion um, builds on an already substantive program of work under the Water Utility Improvement Program that's um, every day helping to link our water sectors um, more closely together. And I know that um, AWA and NSAWAS um, in particular have been a driving force for that. Um, so once again, um, I thank, uh, thank them both for organising this seminar and thank you all for participating and we're very much looking forward to hearing some of the discussion today. Vâng, xin cảm ơn ông Robin rất là nhiều ạ. Thank you very much, Mr. Robin Petno for your sharing. Ladies and gentlemen, let's uh, move on with the next item in our agenda. So during this webinar, we have been working with the Vietnam Water Sewerage Association to conduct a number of surveys so I would like to conduct the survey right now with the first questions. So let's have a look at the first question. So I hope that everyone can join the survey with us. Please collect the impacts of COVID-19 on your company. You see the question popping up on your screen. So the question number one is, what are the impacts of COVID-19 on your company? You can choose more than one option. So I'm receiving a lot of responses from the audience. Please continue to participate. Got one more minute to respond to the first question. May I ask all of you to respond to the first question? You've got 30 seconds to go. Vâng, xin cảm ơn tất cả mọi người ạ. Chúng tôi đã Thank you very much everyone for joining. I have received a lot of responses from you. So may I share with you the compilation of responses from all of the audience members. So as you can see on the screen right now, 
I so 59 percent of the responses were saying that there has been a change in expenditure plan and reporting schemes. So we will make a report out of all of your responses and send it to the Vietnam uh, Water Sewer Association. I thank you for joining the first question. To continue with our webinar, may I introduce to you Mr. David Shehan, uh, Senior Water Quality and Repository Advisor from Oliven Water in Australia to deliver his presentation. Xin uh, chào, and it's a great honor to be here presenting to uh, Vietnam colleagues and, um, and friends. I'll try and share my screen with you uh, so that we can run through the presentation. Uh, so uh, is that screen being shared at the moment? Again, uh, the topic I'd like to discuss with you today uh, here on this webinar is how um, or the approaches that Colburn Water is taking to managing uh, operator health uh, during the uh, COVID-19 pandemic. The first measure we're taking is to ensure physical distancing. So we are asking all staff to stay at least 1.5 metres apart. We're also encouraging no handshaking or other physical contact between staff to ensure that no one becomes infected. So beyond staying apart, uh, we're also asking staff to make sure that um, if they need to go in the field, um, they only go one person at a time in a car because the car is a very limited enclosed space. And we've also set limits on the number of um, uh, people that can sit in a meeting room within our office, again, to ensure that we maintain that physical distancing. The other thing that we have done, particularly with our field staff, is that we have created separate teams, separate work teams. And this is to ensure, we also need to make, obviously ensure that each of those work teams has the skills that are needed to do all the tasks that they're required to do. But the main reason that we have created these teams is to ensure that if infection does occur, then only one team may become infected and the other team will be able to undertake all, all operational tasks. And that way we ensure that by combining physical distancing, as well as um, the separation of teams, that we maintain a healthy workforce um, uh, to, uh, the, to, to undertake all, all tasks to make sure we provide safe water and wastewater services. As we've heard in the previous presentations, uh, personal hygiene is of extreme importance to stop the spread of disease. So we have, in, we have gone and made ensured that there is sufficient soap or if there is not soap hand sanitizer available at each uh, work site. We have provided information to all staff uh, to know the importance of regular hand washing, particularly after touching common surfaces um, like uh, perhaps the photocopier or door handles or, or other uh, uh, common, common spaces. Um, obviously after using the washroom, or any work that requires touching sewage or wastewater. Um, so that, that those personal hygiene um, measures are very important. And as I mentioned on the earlier slide, everyone needs to remember that unfortunately, there's no handshaking or other close contact in the workplace to ensure that we limit the spread of the disease. 
We also are going to a lot of effort to know who has visited each of our work sites. So we are recording the names and contact details of all staff and visitors who visit each site in case in the future someone tests positive for COVID-19. So the information that we are recording is the date of their visit, their name, a contact number, whether when the person visited the site they were feeling well, whether that it traveled outside our province in the, in the past 14 days, and whether they have had contact with anyone who is known to have the virus in the past 14 days. And if the last three questions, you answer yes to those, then the advice is that you do not attend that site um, and that you go home and self-isolate. The other thing that we are stressing uh, with our staff, if they feel un unwell, they are not to come to work because um, uh, we do not want to risk infecting others. Um, unfortunately, in the past, um, some people who may have felt just a little bit unwell and uh, felt they needed to come into the office may have done so. But under COVID-19 restrictions, if you're feeling unwell, you must not come to work. You must stay in isolation and get tested for, for COVID-19 if possible. Additionally, if a close family member is unwell, we also are very strongly suggesting you do not come to work even if you show no symptoms that you may have COVID-19. The reason for that, as many of you would know, is that you may, have, you may be positive for COVID-19 for quite a while and show no symptoms. Uh, so if, you, if you've been in close contact with anyone who you think is, who is unwell, then you should not be in the office because you may spread it to others. And additionally, if you, are, if you do come to the office and you do begin to feel unwell, you tell your supervisor, you go home, and you self-isolate till you get cleared of being positive for COVID-19. Um, the last one that we'll like to cover, and um, uh, Dr. Deer and Dr. Viet Ang have already covered off on a lot of this um, information already. Um, but at, at the moment, despite some uncertainty, uh, the current water or wastewater sewage device is that it's important to note that sewage contains uh, waste products from far, far more sources than just species, and that is their potential sources for virus particles. But at the moment, um, there's a little bit of uncertainty, but there's no evidence of increased risk of catching COVID-19 from exposure to sewage. But it is important to note that there's a wide range of infectious organisms. So in all cases, suitable personal protection and hygiene measures should always be used. And the current, but the current PPE and hygiene measures are protective against contracting COVID-19 from sewage. And if that information were to change with new science, then we'd obviously update our advice to our wastewater workers. So these are the measures that Coliburn Water and the Australian Water Industry in general are taking to make sure that their staff remain healthy and are available to undertake important tasks, including managing the water supply and the wastewater supply services. So I thank you for your time and I look forward to answering any further questions during the question and answer session today. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. David Sheehan for your presentation. So uh, again, if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to type your questions in the chat box. And then we will collect all the questions and refer them to the speakers. So now the next item in the agenda, may I invite Mr. Chen Kim Taik, the head of the water quality management from Sawa called the Saigon Water Company, what's uh, sharing on their uh, experience in the company.
Anh Thạch có thể nói uh, bật mic lên không ạ? Mr. Thạch, could you please uh, turn your microphone? Hey, Mr. Tech, are you there? Can you turn on? Okay. Okay, we can hear you now. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm representing the SAWA call to have a short presentation on our safe water supply plan uh, in the context of COVID-19 pandemic. First of all, let me introduce uh, about Sawako and Sawako uh, provides the water supply service for the entire city of Ho Chi Minh City. Ho Chi Minh City, as you have known, is the most developed uh, city in, in Vietnam and we have a very a huge population in the city uh, and also um, the visitors. And um, so uh, COVID-19 has uh, greatly impacted Ho Chi Minh City and at the present time, our total capacity for water supply in Ho Chi Minh City is 1.9 million cubic meters per day and night. And you know that the COVID-19 is uh, really impacting the whole uh, globe, the whole world. And as the experts have already mentioned before, we can see that virus uh, COVID-19 virus can also be found in the way in the waste water however we haven't got any evidences to show that um, there has been the infection uh, through the water uh, scheme and uh, however there are some calculations uh, from the experts that if we can reduce the amount of the viruses in the waste water sources um, then um, we can eliminate uh, the risk of infection and widespread so, however, in order to manage or to control the uh, virus, uh, we still recommend uh, the people to wash their hands and to keep the good uh, hygienic conditions uh, in the house, in the offices, as well as the uh, workplace, especially after using the uh, common and public uh, uh, facilities and utilities, for example, the handles or the uh, toilets. Um, system. So in our safe water supply plan for pandemic, for COVID-19 pandemic, we have pointed out the following requirements. First of all, uh, the requirement is that we need to continue we need to ensure the continuity of the services although there has been a lower demand for water use from the fact that many hotels and restaurants have been closed due to the COVID-19 but still we, we still have a very high demand of water use from the household and whereas you know that there can be also a lot of the human waste that are discharged every day from the household and it can be a source of infection um, so um, that's the first requirement that we need to ensure that the water supply is safe and the water user also understand about the requirement. And uh, the other impact of COVID-19 to our operations, that is in terms of the human resources or staffing in another word, we need to ensure that we have enough of the staff to work and um, then the uh, supply of chemicals and other kinds of materials in order to ensure the safe water supply and another challenge is about how to ensure that we are not uh, very negatively impacted in terms of revenues and how we can um, continue the measurements of the water use amount and so uh, let me share with you what we have done in order to manage all of those issues first of all in terms of the staffing issue we have to establish the uh, steering committee which is in charge of responding to COVID-19 in our company and such the steering committee is now headed by the chairman of the uh, board of directors of the company and we have also developed uh, several uh, alternatives uh, for uh, staffing uh, like another uh, speaker has already shared before we also have the separate uh, working teams and uh, we have also rearranged uh, the shifting um, uh, timelines 
So especially for the administrative um, uh, staff, they uh, can't work from home for 50% of the time and another 50% then they have to go to the office. And um, now we know that uh, for one shift, for one working shift in Vietnam, usually it should be eight hours according to our legal regulations in Vietnam. But in the time of the COVID-19 pandemic, we have um, adjusted um, the uh, duration of one working shift to 12 hours in order to reduce the time that people have to travel on the roads. And um, we also arranged the standby uh, staffing in order to replace any person who may be infected with the COVID-19 virus. And then uh, we have also been working with the um, like uh, the city CDC in order to develop um, the plan for uh, isolating um, the in-place or on-site isolation for the infected people. Uh, because uh, according to the current regulations in Vietnam, the infected uh, people at the workplace must be isolated and must be quarantined right in the place. And we, you may have known that uh, in Vietnam, there are also the regulations asking that F2 and F3 of the infected people must uh, be um, isolated at their home for at least uh, 14 days. So we have also developed the scenarios that if among our staff, there are the F2 and F3 people, they must uh, stay at home. In that case, we won't uh, lack of people working in the company. Uh, and if uh, there are many uh, staff uh, who are the F2 or F3, uh, then uh, we'll need to uh, ensure that we have enough of the other staff to replace them. And if we have one staff or several staff who are directly infected with the virus, then we will make one of our facilities to become a centralized isolation or quarantine area. So all of uh, the workers during that shift, or all of the workers who have contacts with those infected people will be kept in that quarantine area in order to prevent any further infections. And another uh, measures or another solutions that we have taken, that is uh, we use more regularly the disinfection uh, solutions. Uh, so maybe every week now we spray the disinfectant uh, in the company and uh, we try to minimize uh, the number of visitors uh, going to our office. And uh, uh, in some plants, in some wastewater uh, treatment plants under our company, they even ask uh, for reporting the travel histories of the visitors and workers uh, to know if they have uh, traveled through the infected areas. And we have also done more communications and awareness raising to all the workers about the COVID-19. And all the, of the meetings um, uh, are, uh, you know, um, organized in a new way. That is, we do not allow more than 10 people uh, gathering in the same meeting room at the same time. And also we know and we understand the importance of ensuring the continuity of the supply chain. And that's why we have requested that we should have at least one month available chemicals. Um, and during the COVID-19 pandemic, we have strengthened our uh, relationship with the suppliers of the chemicals so that we can have more storage of the chemicals. Uh, that is, we asked the suppliers to reserve uh, a, a storage um, uh, uh, room for us in their uh, storage houses. So that means we can uh, store the chemicals not only in our own storage housing, but also in the suppliers' uh, store, uh, storage facilities. And uh, we also need to ensure the availability of the imported chemicals for the laboratory activities. And in order to ensure the availability of those imported chemicals, we have to strengthen our cooperation with the importing uh, companies. Um, and uh, together we have made efforts in order to ensure the continuous flow of those imported chemicals.
and then uh, again the disinfection uh, has been also strengthened and according to recommendations from the uh, uh, public health agency we have been using uh, uh, chloramine uh, chlorine actually uh, to disinfect our offices uh, from 1.1 to 1.2 uh, concentration uh, chlorine has been used and um, for our business plan we have been always emphasizing the safety and continuity of the service uh, 24 hours and seven days a week that water supply must be continued so that's why as i said before um, we uh, have made uh, some arrangements and adjustment uh, uh, to the staffing plan in order to ensure that we always have enough of the personnel working and to provide the services to the customers and we have also uh, sent the notices to our customers the estimated cost of the service for the last three months so that we can reduce the uh, time of contacting the customers and um, and so we also work with the local governments and authorities and to contribute uh, to the uh, general and common efforts of responding to COVID-19. And we have also had uh, several incentives. For example, we have um, exempted uh, the service fee for the poor and near poor customers uh, for three months. And we have also uh, established uh, the uh, washing uh, facility, hand washing facilities for the schools and uh, in some uh, public places. Uh, so as a kind of one contribution from our company to the whole um, uh, general uh, responses in the country to COVID-19. Thank you very much for your attention. Tiếp theo chương trình, uh, ban tổ chức xin kính mời ông Justin Hughes, kỹ sư trưởng xây dựng và môi trường từ công ty nước Whitsunday, lên trình bày uh, và chia sẻ kinh nghiệm của công ty mình. Ạ. Unmute. Um, can everyone hear me? Yep, yep. I can hear you. Yes. Okay. Please. Thank you very much. Um, well, thanks. Thanks for letting me present. Um, I guess I was trying to look for um, rather than go through the similar things that previously uh, two presenters ago presented. We were trying to look for um, our approach to business continuity and recovery planning, and I guess how it ties into historical continuity and recovery planning, um, with a view to hopefully improving our processes and maybe assisting others in finding common learnings. Okay, just to do this, we're gonna go through our region and setting normal business continuity planning, adjustments we've made for COVID, impacts um, on community health, which is thankfully minor in our region, and our operations, um, some of which really were planned, and I guess that's a key point. Impacts on our economy that we're observing so far, I know we're all in this together and this will be an interesting one, and working to support the recovery. So as you can see, we're in the north part of Australia. Sometimes it looks nice and pretty. Um, but we're a small diverse region, like the whole region is 40,000 people. So to our Vietnamese friends, we're barely a few communes, um, but we're over a fairly large and diverse area. Our key um, economic drivers are tourism, agriculture and mining. And so here we have significant horticulture, significant um, grazing and um, agriculture and sugarcane, as well as mining and tourist um, businesses. So normal business continuity planning, so prior to COVID, related primarily to cyclones and floods. So whilst it may look pretty at some times, it does not look pretty at other times. And so we already had split our teams based on locality due to flooding risk. Um, we had primary and alternative locations for meetings, but less focus on online and virtual interactions. Clearly a learning there that we're getting better at. And I suspect there's a learning for um, those who um, can go straight to virtual interactions. Um, to effectively keep their costs down by avoiding need for multiple alternate locations. If virtual interactions can provide this, what you need, um, there's an opportunity there to jump to the final technology or jump a whole technology step. 
we had a clear activation framework, albeit focused on natural disasters, and a clear hierarchy of objectives, which again, all align with um, the um, Australian government, state government, and um, AWA's planning. So clean, um, so clean water, then drinking water, then sewage, then repairs, then maintenance, then capital delivery. And so we had a clear understanding of what we were going to maintain and what we were willing to accept some impact on. Um, and so when we went through COVID-19, we needed to refine the splitting of our teams um, because as previously explained, we did not have the vehicles and vehicles are close containment for all our staff members. Um, we had a greater reliance on on time online tools and we expect that's a long-term positive legacy. We had to adjust our activation framework um, as a pattern, you know, as it, it could not be seen. And so we needed to have deliberate caution as opposed to address the challenge in front of us. Um, and we engaged with our industry in terms of um, support for our staff. Um, we would have benefited, and I guess hopefully this might be of use, um, in terms of depth and key areas. So in particular water treatment operators, I guess, as shown in the photo, a lot of our operators are a little older. Um, and so I guess they're learning from this experience is to try and get diversity of age, diversity of gender in, um, in our operators staff, in our key positions, because I guess what, you know, hasn't caused us specific grief, but what we've learned going through this is um, uniformity whilst, you know, is a, you know, reduces your, your resilience in key areas. And I guess the age and uniformity of our treatment operation staff have been highlighted as a result of this process. Um, we also had to adjust our procurement and stock levels for critical items, um, targeting operations and repairs. So the impact on our community, fortunately less than five people in our region tested positive, um, no community spread. Um, operations continued, potable clean water and potable water was delivered sewage services were delivered and network and emergency repairs were delivered. But we will, did take a hit and a deliberate um, hit on our ability to deliver proactive maintenance and capital delivery. And I guess that was part of our overall plan is um, in order to protect human health um, and then protect, protect human health of our population, protect the human health of our staff, um, where were we willing to accept an impact? And essentially it was impacting our proactive maintenance and capital delivery. And we are working now to catch up on that and essentially maintain supply to our community. Looking forward to economic impacts, it's quite clear that tourism is taking a significant, is under significant risk and impact um, with international guests um, and interstate guests restricted in the band. Um, mining, some companies have implemented COVID safe, plan, COVID safe plans and older mining staff have been stood down. Um, so, and additionally, coal price has been down. So I, driver there has been impacting our economy. Um, horticulture and agriculture has seasonal work implications, but um, it's also realistically been reasonably unaffected. And it's important that we continue to produce um, for Australia and our export partners. Uh, an opportunity that's relatively obvious is the digital economy. And the same goes with Vietnam. Um, there's opportunity for workers who have proven working digitally is effective and can move to our region or other regions to contribute. And I guess that's really a, a uniform opportunity as Vietnam having done fantastically in managing COVID, being a safe and reliable place to be, um, you know, compared to the rest of the world, there's an opportunity essentially in offering, you know, in housing digital workers in our regions, I guess is you know, and a possible upside to the recovery. Um, working to support our recovery in a practical sense, we've worked on our economic recovery plan. Um, we continue to keep cost focused. Again, previously raised this point is we need clean um, drinking water, clean sewage services to support hygiene, but we need to be cost focused um, to support the economic um, output of our region to keep as many businesses in the region viable. Um, we can need to support our agricultural sectors, um, getting the price to market, and we've been able to work with um, the state and federal government to look for opportunities to undertake necessary upgrades, especially focusing on the popular tourist spots where the impact is low. So we've managed to, I've been fortunate enough to get co-funding on a bulk water pipeline, a reservoir, 
as well as a solar project where we intend to generate 80% of the power necessary for a town's water supply from um, self-generated solar and essentially just generate, you know, produce water during the day, leave water in the reservoir for the evening and optimise um, uh, according to that process. Um, additionally, in order to work in support recovery, we intend to listen and engage to work together to recover. And that's, I guess, part of this is, um, whilst I hope one or two points might be useful to each listener, um, I'm very interested to listen to how everyone else has managed what they've done and um, how we can all recover from this, you know, economic impact coming along um, and grow a stronger and, uh, you know, a strong safe economy. I hope that's been helpful. Okay, xin yes. cảm ơn ông Justin. Vì lắng nghe. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And next on the agenda, may I invite Mr. Vũ Văn Tuấn, representing the Quảng Ninh Water Supply Company, with the presentation. Anh để ở ngoài ngoài đầu hẻm nhé anh. Cái đồng hồ nước á. Cái đồng hồ nước á. Để ngoài đầu hẻm á. Tại vì em. Xin mời đại diện của công ty cấp nước Quảng Ninh ạ. Uh, may we hear from the Quảng Ninh Water Supply Company representative? Maybe the connection is not good. So may we ask the Quảng Ninh Water Company to come later? So may I now invite Mr. Hoàng Chiến Thắng, the head of the planning department from Hanoi Water Supply Company. Hanoi Water Supply Company. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm very happy to be participating in this uh, webinar and I'd like to deliver a short presentation to on a number of measures that we have taken to ensure the health and wellness and well-being for our workers. Uh, in this uh, COVID-19 pandemic, I would like to introduce to you about our company, uh, what um, our main task and duties that is uh, to do the management and uh, operations and maintenance of the water supply facilities, including the pumping stations and the wastewater treatment plants in Hanoi City. And we are also working on maintaining and operating uh, the reservoirs that are the sources of water supply for Hanoi City. And this is uh, some information and numbers about uh, the uh, company's operations. We also have some projects uh, on the environmental impact mitigations, especially the projects uh, relating to the water environment impacts and uh, relating to the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. So, you know, in January 2020, we started to see the first case of inflation of uh, of uh, infection and then in March, um, the number of the infection cases was increased, including uh, many cases that were found and detected in Hanoi City. And during March 2020, uh, the two uh, specific areas in the city were isolated, were locked down actually. That is uh, around um, the Chuk Bạch uh, wastewater treatment plant and uh, near the um, uh, a new residential area. And um, so in such the context, our company um, followed all the guidelines and uh, guidances and orders from the government as well as from the local authorities in order to develop our response plan. And in particular, we have uh, established uh, the working teams in the company and we have separated uh, the uh, employers uh, to the two block one is the administrative staff and another is the field workers and um, actually we also have another uh, group uh, uh, consisting of um, the uh, uh, standby staff and we um, have also taken actions 
Uh, first of all, the response actions for the wastewater treatment plant at Chukbak. Chukbak is uh, the uh, um, area that was locked down uh, in Hanoi City because there was the, the uh, COVID-19 patient was found there. And our workers were requested to wear the face mask and uh, to report on their health and travel history. and. Um, in terms of uh, the indirect workers, we also uh, requested uh, that, um, I mean, 50% of the staff can work from home and another 50% of the staff uh, should go to the office, uh, but um, they will take home in doing so. And um, in the company, we have also uh, applied some other measures. For example, all the meetings were organized online and uh, we also limited the use of the printed out papers. Instead, we moved to using the electronic files and uh, electronic papers and documents. And uh, we also have um, uh, sprayed our offices uh, and facilities with the disinfectant. And before any working shift, we also asked our staff to have the body temperature checking. 100% of the field workers have to face, uh, have to wear the face mask and to keep the minimum distance of two meters from each other. And uh, we used more mechanized equipment rather than the manual work. And again, we also separated our staff into the smaller working teams so that uh, we could easily isolate uh, the infected people in case there's a case of, disinf of, disinf uh, of infection. And um, apart from those actions, uh, we have also strengthened uh, the safety requirements and we have uh, uh, also distributed the face mask and also the hand sanitizers and also PPE for our staff. For example, for the direct workers who work on the field, especially at the wastewater treatment plants, uh, then in order to prevent any uh, water droplets into their eyes, we have also distributed them the glasses. And um, we have also uh, made arrangements so that we do not receive the visitors in our office, uh, but rather than we would have um, uh, another place for the vis for the visitors to come and to stay for a while, and where they should uh, wash their hands first. And um, so, until now, we haven't got any case of infections in the company. And for the upcoming time, in order to uh, ensure the goals and targets uh, that has been um, uh, set up by the government and by the city authorities, we will continue our response plan and will further update information about the situations of the pandemic in the country as well as in the world. And we'll also be proactive in procuring more disinfectant and more swab and sanitizers and uh, uh, face mask and other uh, materials and supplies. And we'll also continue uh, our hygiene solutions and uh, spraying uh, and, and disinfecting our offices and facilities. And if there is any case that our staff has the symptoms of fever or coughing, then the person uh, should stay at home, should not go to work, and would be recommended to go to hospital for a medical examination. So thank you very much for listening. Thank you very much, the representative from Hanoi, Waco. All right, now let's move on to the next presentation. Mr. Vic, Senator and Austin Morris from Riverna Water from New South Wales, Australia to deliver that presentation.
Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Austin Morris. I'm the manager of works here at Riverina Water. Uh, with me, I have Beads Banigal, who is the director of engineering. Hello, everyone. Uh, we're going to just talk about our risk matrix that was developed uh, as part of our response. Um, I don't want to repeat too much what other people have said. So um, basically, I'll we'll discuss the background, give a bit of a background, and Bede will discuss the matrix in a bit more detail. I think, um, as uh, as Daniel and other speakers have mentioned, our main focus was on continuation of supply uh, being an essential service, making sure our community had the uh, what they needed. Okay, so just a bit of background: uh, River and Water, where a rural uh, organisation. Um, if you can see down the bottom left there, we're about five hours uh, from Sydney, uh, close to the New South Wales Victorian border, and we cover four local government areas, and we are a single uh, focus utility just providing drinking water to about 75,000 people. So on the 10th of March, uh, we enacted our business continuity plan and formed the continuity management team I think as Justin uh, explained we have regular uh, uh, training drills uh, around that but this was uh, the actual enactment of that plan so just some more background about uh, COVID-19 in our area the number of cases peaked at 45 on the 17th of April which is 10 in Wagga Wagga which is where our office is located and there have been no new cases reported uh, since the 20, or since, since then, as at 24th of June, the majority of those cases, so 40 out of the 45 were returning overseas travellers, so very low um, community transmission, and one death reported uh, as at 24th of June. So the CMT uh, who used the matrix, uh, responsible for the emergency management, comprised of the general manager of our organization. He's responsible for uh, all final decisions, working with uh, BEAD, our director of engineering and all the managers to provide advice. Uh, our governance officer who was responsible for record keeping, our IT supervisor, making sure people had relevant infrastructure or um, any hardware that they needed, any software support at WHS officer I think uh, as other speakers have mentioned making sure our workers were safe they had the PPE any hand sanitizer that they needed and our communications and engagement officer ensuring that our staff our um, hundred staff had the information that they needed and also our community were informed about what we were doing so I won't go into this too much, but just quickly, these are some of the practical things we did very quickly, which the others have talked about. Uh, working from home for staff straight away where possible. Um, isolating crews, so no crossover between um, construction and maintenance crews, so that if um, one staff member um, was suspected of being infected, they didn't um, contaminate the other crews. Uh, physical distancing, the others have talked about, as you can see, this meeting room we're in now, tables have been separated, uh, things like that. Uh, physical distancing for travel, uh, that involved hiring uh, additional vehicles um, to separate crews, um, standard isolation for anyone suspected and, until they were able to get tested and cancelled any training or non-essential meetings. I'll um, hand over to Bede. So I get what we wanted to focus on was the um, how we sort of made the decision to ramp up our uh, shutdown process. Um, so we developed a matrix um, that across the top had five different levels um, ranging from um, working from home and um, separating work crews, uh, critical work crews, right through to level five where we had a complete shutdown um, of our organisation apart from critical services. Um, the levels were determined by, so if I just go to the next slide, it might be better, hang on. So the five levels across the top were determined by 
either the number of coronavirus cases in our um, city of Wagga Wagga or within our uh, area that we serviced. And then if we had a case in our within our organisation, uh, we would go to the next level. If we had a number of cases in a particular work area of the company, then we'd go to level four or level five, depending on the severity. So it's about um, how you make the decision and when um, and have clear guidelines as to what the next step that you go to. So the risk areas that we identified was the, the continuity management team themselves that were running the emergency response, uh, the general manager and executive uh, leadership team. So we made sure that they were separate so that there was always um, an executive leader um, able to run the organisation. Our customer service, safety precautions, communications, both internal and external. Um, meetings and travel. So, um, for example, we banned all uh, meetings and travel outside of our service area. Procedures and protocols and um, key managers and supervisors. So just as an example, um, at the first level of our decision-making process, which was when there was a um, COVID case within the Wagga area, we uh, would implement things like um, no cash handling from our customers, um, but yet the customer service was still open and operating, but just wouldn't handle cash. And then the yellow level was the second level of the matrix where um, there are a significant number of cases within the Wagga area, um, which posed a much greater risk of community transmission and, and particularly for our staff that were dealing with members of the public. So you can see there, when it went to that level in our community, we um, closed the um, customer service um, building. So we weren't having any contact with customers. Then we started to separate our teams um, and implement those actions that we we talked about earlier. Um, so here's the customer service example. So green was when there was one case in Wagga. Yellow was when there were a, a number of cases and there was a much higher risk to our organisation. Um, orange is where we sit at the moment. Um, that's guided more by government guidelines. So they're saying that... Um, the company should still in, in allow people to work from home. Um, however, we have opened up our um, admin customer building. So we're now um, having contact with our customers again. Uh, we never got to the red level, but we, we had actions in place um, ready to go if it got worse um, or if it still continues to get worse uh, with the second spike in cases. Um, so after the peak, um, we, we, the Wagga area was the same and um, New South Wales was the same as pretty much everywhere else that we've seen. We had a, a spike in late March and then a drop off and um, at the moment it's um, at a fairly low base, although there's been a spike in Victoria. Um, so dovetailed with the rich matrix that we ramped up with, we've also developed a de-escalation matrix. So now that there are no cases in the Wagga area, we've said we'll open up our um, admin building to customers. Um, we'll um, reintroduce meetings with more people. So I think we're, we're now um, having up to 20 people in a meeting if necessary for our um, own, within our own staff. Um, so we've got a, a measured response to de-escalate the shutdown um, in the same way that we escalated the shutdown when it first became apparent we had a problem. That's it. Thanks. Hoi. Hmm.
Thank you, Bid. Xin cảm ơn ông Bid và ông Austin. Thank you very much, Mr. Bid and Mr. Austin. So next on the agenda, may we invite the representative from Bình Dương Water Supply and Environmental Service Company, Mr. Trần Tiến Công, the director of the company, please. The floor is yours. Thưa quý vị, là vì do lối là uh, Again, uh, due to the technical problem, the uh, BYC, the Bình Dương Water Supply Company, is not yet connected. So may we now invite the next uh, presentation from the Singleton Council. May we invite Madam Cathy, Cathy the head manager uh, from the Singleton Council, with your presentation. Thanks, Quy, and thanks very much. Vâng, xin cảm ơn. So we're based in uh, Hunter Valley, uh, about two and a half hours from Sydney inland. Um, so the focus of my presentation today is very firmly on what council did to support our community, as well as what council did to support our staff, I guess, through the COVID-19 response, recognising um, that it's been difficult for everyone, regardless of, um, I guess the, the luck that Singleton had only having two cases, um, but that certainly hasn't stopped it, the, um, the pandemic having quite the impact on our staff and the community. So um, Singleton Council acknowledges that the community has been significantly affected by COVID-19 and we wanted to do everything possible to provide both immediate and longer term support. Um, although it will mean that we will need to do more, be more innovative in reducing costs to cover this reduction in income that we've experienced. We believe it is the right thing to do to the community. So Singleton Council um, is offering those who are experiencing hardship as a result of the pandemic, um, that the opportunity to apply for a rebate to ensure that they'll pay no more in 2021 than 2019-20 on their water and sewer bills. Um, Council has also waived liquid trade waste annual fees, extended the due dates on all water and sewer bills, suspended interest and debt recovery until 31st of August 2020. All of this is in an effort um, to recognise that there's a lot of members of our community who are really struggling, um, but also um, to ensure that we still have um, the income wherever possible to continue delivering the service that is expected of us and all water utilities in these times. Um, we've also had a very large focus on continuing to spend money in the community during COVID-19. This has included continuing with existing construction projects, proceeding with planned capital works. Um, we have a program where preferencing local contractors wherever possible and paying invoices as quickly as possible. So we believe and we recognise that doing these things, um, we're in a very privileged position where we do have money um, and that we play a very important part in the local economy and we should continue to play an important part in the, in the local economy wherever possible. We also recognise that our workload as council has, um, if anything, increased without the same drop in income experienced by other businesses. So we have committed to continuing to hire for vacant positions wherever possible um, with the intention of reducing local unemployment um, wherever possible. So, Singleton Council appreciates that people are our greatest single asset and that for our staff to continue to deliver services to the community in very challenging times, they need to feel safe and they need to feel appreciated. The focus on the, um, throughout the pandemic was to ensure that our staff felt supported wherever possible, um, noting that these are incredibly unprecedented times. So this came in many forms and it had a significant focus on supporting staff to care for their families, including providing um, allowances for a lot of homeschooling, as well as their physical and mental health, all while um, maintaining normal services to the community. 
It, it included providing daily updates to staff to provide reassurance and accurate and timely information. This, fo this focused on supporting the specific needs of staff physically at work, but also those working from home. Our general manager visited several work sites and conducted several Zoom sessions to keep staff updated on the support available for them as an employee, but also what council was doing to support their community. Council engaged with its employee assistance program provider to provide weekly COVID-19 webinars, which included topics ranging from dealing with stress in uncertain times and managing work whilst homeschooling children. The council's leadership team, um, which formed the emergency team um, as a lot of other water utilities have described, spent a considerable amount of time planning for employee leave scenarios to provide certainty to employees no matter what eventuated and in include to provide certainty in circumstances such as an employee being diagnosed with COVID-19 to leave avail available to employees in the event of complete shutdown of services. So Singleton Council all have, also has a focus of going above and beyond wherever possible. So we look to go above and beyond in providing additional leave for staff, including an additional two week special leave in the event of a staff member getting COVID-19, being tested for COVID-19, or being exposed to someone suspected of having COVID-19. We provided four weeks of additional leave in the event an employee was stood down, and 13 weeks job retention allowance in the event an employee continues to be stood down. We also introduced um, COVID care, um, COVID care days, which was an allowance of up to two days per employee to look after children learning from home or just have a bit of a break from work. Like most businesses, Council also provided for staff to work from home wherever possible, as well as providing for social distancing requirements at work. We also provided alternate duties as a first priority for all staff affected by the close down of services. We explored redeploying staff to support essential services, including water and sewer and our roads teams. For example, as council's library services were shut down, we started preparing training plans for library staff to undertake water sampling and asset inspections in the event they no longer had meaningful work or if we had staff who were unable to work during illness. This out of the box thinking gave us comfort that we were doing everything possible for our staff, but also mitigating our risk of interruption to services. So council was also receiving a lot of negative feedback from the community that staff were still out and about undertaking maintenance of water and sewer, roads, parks, as well as continuing with capital projects. We also had several instances of staff, of customers not treating our staff with respect, which we don't tolerate. To help, therefore, to help educate our community on the important work that council does, as well as support our staff, council's communication team developed the hashtag, we are here for you no matter what campaign. This included a social media campaign, radio advertising, information in the regular community newsletter, and providing informational postcards for our operational staff to hand out. So this campaign was successful in, in reducing the negative feedback to the community and ensuring that despite some isolated negative experiences by our staff, staff knew that they were supported by council. So I just wanna show you a short clip of um, an example of our, our um, campaign. Katie, can you share the uh, audio and the sound, please, so that we can hear the sound? So managing the effects of COVID-19 have been difficult for every single employee, employer, customer, resident and business owner, not just in Singleton, but across the world. So Singleton Council worked as hard as possible to provide as much support as we could in the ever-changing environment. It hasn't always been easy and it hasn't always turned out the way we thought, but we truly think we have been there and will continue to be there for our community and particularly for our employees, no matter what. Thank you very much. Thank you, Katie. Xin cảm ơn bà Katie ạ.
Tiếp theo chương trình hội thảo. Uh... Thank you, Casey. Thank you very much. And now to continue the agenda of the webinar, may we continue our polling survey? So this is question number two. Can you see the question number two on the screen? So the question is, what are the most important or most urgent challenge to you that you would uh, prefer to resolve in your company? So please choose only one option. Như quý vị có thể thấy ở trên màn hình đó là các oh, as you can see again the question is what is the most important and most urgent challenge and the options are first of all ensuring the rate of connections and water supply to the areas where there is not yet the accessibility to water supply the second option is um, the possibility to reduce or exempt uh, the uh, uh, bills the water bills and the next option is how to ensure the measuring and invoicing activities and then the next option is how to arrange the work from home uh, scheme for the staff and the next option is how to conduct the risk management for the company during and after the COVID-19 and the last option is what are the incentive what can be the incentive uh, from the local governments in order to provide support to the customers so you have uh, two two three minutes to answer these questions Vâng, thời gian dành cho trả lời đã hết thì chúng tôi xin được so, Time's up for the question, so we'd like to announce the polling result. Uh, I hope that you can see it on the screen. So most of the respondent, 29% of the respondent actually said that uh, the most important challenge to them is the risk management during and after the COVID-19 and they would uh, give preference uh, to solving this uh, challenge. So thank you very much for participating in the polling survey. And again, we will share all of the polling results to everyone uh, through the VYC and VYC will again share the information to all of you. So uh, now in the agenda, we'd like to welcome back uh, Mr. Tuấn, representing the Quảng Ninh Water Supply Company, with the presentation. On behalf of Quảng Ninh Water Company, I would like to extend my greetings to you all. So, regarding our company during COVID-19, Quang Water Company has tried our best to adopt procedures and measures against COVID-19 and to ensure the continuity of our business. Now, I would like to give you a brief introduction of our water company. So, Quang Ninh Water Company has 1,488 employees. These are our records in 2019. The volume of water consumed was 57 million cubic meters. Our revenue was 601 billion dong, and our loss uh, was at 11.8%. At the beginning of 2020, the risk of infection in Guangning was really high. It was listed as one of the most vulnerable provinces to 
COVID-19 due to our borderline with China and due to our Bandung International uh, Airport and other seaports, as well as the number of tourists visiting our city. Regarding the challenges that we're facing due to COVID-19, the share of service industries, including tourism and other services in our revenue is pretty high. And that's the reason why we experienced a 10% reduction in terms of our revenue and uh, monthly. And number two is that our water, um, clean water tariff over the past few years has not been, in, has not been adjusted or increased while the costs of supplies and chemicals and electricity have increased significantly over the past few years. What we would like to share with you today is our safety measures for our employees in response to COVID-19. So during COVID-19, we adhered to the recommendations of the Ministry of Health. We did what other businesses have done presented, just like the Coach Ming Water Company and our South Water Company. We work on communication, making sure that every employee understands what they have to do to protect themselves and others. In terms of our governance, we have established Zalo Group and uh, meetings over Zoom. Most of our meetings at the moment have been conducted online. If we do have physical meetings, we make sure that the seats are at least two meters apart from each other. Uh, all of our documents, we try to send to our employees or main participants via email instead of sending them physical copies. In terms of our leave policies, we uh, about 70% of our indirect employees to work from home or to take leave. And for those who are fellow workers, we divide them into smaller shifts so that they can rotate their shifts with each other. On top of that, we have applied other measures against COVID-19. We have developed five scenarios in response to COVID-19. Level one is one positive case and number of suspect cases. So regarding level one within our response and we have developed, we have prescribed the measures corresponding to level one. And as the level of risk increases, we have also developed other solutions. For example, the isolation of one facility or two facilities or training one of a facility into a centralized quarantine. Uh, a higher level of risk if one of our facilities is isolated by the local governments we have already prepared the supplies needed, including chemicals, as well as food for employees, making sure that the business uh, and our service is continued regardless of the isolation, quarantine, or any uh, increased number of COVID-19 cases. In terms of our working environment and workplaces, during COVID-19, even now, we make sure that um, masks are worn at all times. Uh, our workplaces are disinfected using farming B and other disinfectants. Uh, med um, the temperatures are taken on a daily basis. Regarding our meals 
and cafeteria. We make sure that the seats are reasonably apart from each other, making sure that we can limit the risk of infection if um, our employees have to eat at the cafeteria. So two people will sit in one table instead of six or seven in the past. In terms of our business, from Ming Water Company, make sure that our services are continued and we have also strengthened quality control over our water supply and uh, control the percentage of residual chloride in our water. So we always try to make sure that our business is continued at the same time the risk of infection is limited. During social distancing, we have reviewed all uh, assets in our network. What we couldn't do before COVID-19, uh, we have taken advantage of social distancing to finish our constructions and to operate our facilities as soon as possible. especially the constructions of uh, new assets or new facilities within our network or the upgrades of critical facilities that we couldn't do uh, in the past. We also have provided support to our customers. We try to provide our assistance mainly through the phone or through the internet making sure that our employees don't interact perfectly directly with our uh, customers. We mostly handle the applications for services of customers online. Another thing that we have uh, done is non-cash payments of uh, water charges. And most of our customers have adhered to this principle in the past, only 6.7% of our households, uh, domestic users, paid through internet banking or um, BNK. But during COVID-19 and after COVID-19, at the moment, 36% of our domestic users are actually paying non-cash. To support our customers further, uh, certain customers have been exempted uh, from water charges, including our water users from poor households, near poor households, and from businesses affected by COVID-19, especially those most affected by COVID-19, including agricultural businesses, tourism businesses hospitality businesses, most of these businesses have been exempted from water charges. Uh, in um, three months. So in addition to the impact of COVID-19, which have led to our decreased revenue, these kinds of support, uh, I mean water charge exemption, have also further our uh, revenue loss and billion more. So we expect uh, a drop, a dramatic drop in our revenue this year. We have also joined uh, in the charity work and uh, joined common efforts of the society to support COVID-19 responses. We have presented our doctors and frontline health workers with financial support and presence. So uh, that brings me to the end of my presentation on our measures we have taken during COVID-19 and challenges that we have faced uh, during COVID-19. At the moment, we are trying our best to unite our people in an effort to meet our targets 
for the six months of two, that six months of 2020. Thank you very much for listening. Yes, thank you, Mr. Vũ Văn Tuấn from Quảng Ninh Water Company. And may we now invite Mr. Chen Chien Kong, the General Director of Bình Dương Water Company, with the presentation sharing your experience and uh, knowledge with the every participants. So, can you hear me now? Yes, okay, we can hear you. So, first of all, uh, let me thank the sponsor, the Australian Embassy and the Australian Water Association and the Vietnam Water and Sewage Association uh, for organizing this webinar. And thank you very much for inviting us to attend and uh, we are very happy to meet you online uh, to meet all the other water companies in Vietnam and Australia. And on behalf of the Bing Dương Water Company, I will have a short presentation. First of all, I'd like to introduce about our company. At the present time, we have 1,150 staff in the company, including 1,050 people uh, who directly work in the uh, at the water supply and wastewater treatment facilities and around another 100 people who are working in other divisions and departments in the company. And uh, we have the SCADO system to manage the operations of all the water supply and wastewater treatment facilities and also waste uh, treatment facilities of the company and uh, our registered capital is around 65 million US dollars. And the total capacity for water supply is more than 600,000 cubic meters per day and night. However, the non-revenue water is uh, up to 5.5%. In terms of uh, waste management and treatment, we have um, the capacity of collecting and treating more than 2,000 tons of domestic wastes and more than 400 tons of industrial and hazardous wastes. For wastewater treatment, the capacity is 70,000 cubic meters per day and night. About COVID-19 pandemic, actually you may have heard that in Bình Dương province, um, there has been a, a recent news from the Ministry of Health that um, uh, a very big group of people in the Bing Zong province has been tested uh, and with the negative results. So uh, now we can be uh, free from the uh, very big concern, you know, because several days ago we were very worried and concerned that uh, such a big group of people in Bing Zong province would be infected with COVID-19. Um, and um, the demand for water uh, actually is increasing from the household and from the hospitals. Uh, although the demand for water has been decreased uh, from the service, uh, from services such as hotels and restaurants, but we see the increasing demand from households, especially because now many more people stay at home or work from home. So we still see that it's a very important task for us to ensure the continuous service uh, 40, uh, 24 hours a day and seven days a week. So uh, how could we uh, you know, go through this pandemic? First of all, we strictly followed the guidelines and instructions and orders of the government. And uh, we uh, developed uh, the um, uh, posters uh, with the messages on COVID-19 and how to protect uh, ourselves from uh, COVID-19. And um, we also organized the online meetings uh, the one like uh, the webinar today and uh, we also you know before we already had the water supply uh, the automated uh, water supply scheme and we didn't use a lot of the manual work and the water distribution network was already designed and developed quite well before the pandemics 
So now we have added some more functions into the scheme, that is so uh, we also do automation of the uh, indicators, the measurements, and also collisions of B and with the scatter system that was established and operationalized since uh, 2004. Now it can be quite easy to add some more automated functions. And um, in our, again, facilities, we use a lot of the automated uh, equipment, so not much of the manual work. Uh, but uh, we always uh, take care of the health conditions of our staff and uh, we usually remind them not to have direct contacts with the strangers and uh, we also try to reduce the intensity of the work so that our staff can be in the uh, good health conditions and uh, nearly 20% of the staff are allowed to work from home and they can still receive the full salary although the intensity of the work has been reduced we have also installed uh, the transparent um, uh, separator separations as you can see on the screen um, so that uh, we can prevent uh, the in uh, infections and widespread of the viruses from the customers to our staff and vice versa. We also have installed those uh, separations in our canteen and um, in the offices. And so um, we have also applied uh, the isolation uh, rooms, that is uh, to increase the distance uh, between the workers in order to increase the safety. Um, so although on the one hand, we have to increase a little bit our cost of operation, but on the other hand, with such the increased expenditure, we could ensure the continuity of the services, especially during the pandemic, we have seen the higher demand for water. So, so far we have been able to satisfy that increasing demand and uh, we still have the uh, positive growth uh, in our revenue and um, although the cost of production has been increased a little bit because we reduce the intensity of work but uh, still we have profit and we have the positive growth rate of the whole company the whole business so that's a good point and uh, another uh, achievement is that we could uh, satisfy the demand of the customers and we could also contribute to the general responses to COVID-19 in the whole country and wow well, so that's all that we'd like to share with you about our experience in Bing Zung Water Company thank you very much for attention Thank you very much, Mr. Chen Chen Kong, representing Bình Dương Water Company. All right, let's move on to the last presentation of the day. The Ad Water Company is struggling with their technical and internet connections, so we not be able to listen to the presentation from the Ad uh, River Water Supply Company. So let's move on to the last presentation with Water Company. Madam Nhi Ngoc from Hue Water Company. She will share with you their company's experiences. We can hear you. Madam Ngoc can hear you. Good morning, everyone. So, ladies and gentlemen, representing the Water Company, I would like to share with all of you our responses to COVID-19 and how we've been joining hands with affected communities. Yeah. 
Hello, can you hear me? Since the 8th of March in Pilgrimage, uh, we witnessed our first infected cases. And uh, until April 2020, four cases have recovered. And at the moment, we have no cases, active cases in Pilgrimage province. All with other cities and provinces, Pilgrimage practice social distancing in 15 days from the 1st of April to the 15th of April 2020 in accordance with Directive 16 of the Prime Minister. Facing the complicated developments of COVID-19 globally and in Pilgrimage province, the water company has rolled out consistent solutions to ensure continued business and to also join hands with the province to push back COVID-19. Understanding that we are a utility a provider, we have been trying our best to provide safe water for our people. We have started our business in 2009. During and before, during, after COVID-19, we have been trying our best to make sure that the quality and the quality of service uh, are consistent in both rural and urban areas before, during, and after COVID-19. Uh, especially water access for centralized quarantine centers and hospitals. Uh, these facilities are our top priorities when it comes to service provision. To ensure safe water access of all of uh, these facilities and users, in the coming time, we will soon upgrade our existing facilities and construct new plans to ensure that our service quality continues to be improved in the future. In our workplaces, on the 8th of February, we invited the Pinhe Province CDC representatives to come and deliver a training workshop on COVID-19 prevention control for our employees. At the same time, we have allowed our employees to take leave uh, on an alternate basis and allowed our employees to work from home. For those who are still going to work, we make sure that they uh, keep their distance at least 1.5 meters apart. And we also uh, have transferred uh, all of our meetings to online platforms, and we have employed our Zalo groups and our messaging um, platforms more effectively and frequently. We have also equipped our people with masks and hand sanitizers. Temperatures are always taken, uh, not only of our employees, but also visitors and customers visiting our facilities. Uh, twice a week, we will disinfect our workplaces. Uh, regarding customers who visit our facilities, we also have provided them with free masks and we have taken their temperatures. We also kept records of their visits just in case they're infected with COVID-19. We can trace uh, who uh, contacted this person. Uh, in addition, we have raised the awareness among our uh, customers and among people on the use of online transactions online banking and online service registration and online reporting of incidences instead of visiting our offices in person. We are fully aware of the negative impacts of COVID-19 on our economy and the vulnerable groups. Joining the efforts of healthcare, we have also tried our best to contribute, uh, giving back to the community. 
despite the reduced uh, revenue due to the reduced water use from our um, wholesale um, users. Um, by joining the efforts of the community, I mean we have exempted poor and near poor households from water charges. We more specific about 15 million uh, BND for local residents. Uh, in terms of centralized quarantine centers and hospitals and other healthcare facilities, we have been providing them with free clean water. And we have also exempted many households from water charges, not just households, but also businesses working in the tourism sectors and um, hospitality sectors. These are the major challenges close to COVID-19 and our revenue targets in 2020 because the loss that we have estimated can, can um, amount to over 15 billion VND. So our plan is to exempt our users from uh, water charges focusing on poor and near poor households. As part of our corporate social responsibilities, the water company have been looking into the production of uh, hand sanitizers following the formula of the World Health Organization. We also looked into the um, development and design of um, hand sanitizer dispensers. In April, we rolled out our projects on installing hand sanitizer dispensers in um, local market, flea markets to limit the infection, the risk of infection and the spread of COVID-19. We've also been providing bottled water to centralized training centers and hospitals and other, or, or other health facilities. So these are some of the photos that we have taken on the community projects that we have been doing at the water company. With our efforts on the 16th of June 2020, the chairman of the People's Committees of the province uh, sent the water company a letter of appreciation for the efforts that we have made in pushing back COVID-19. On this occasion, we would like to extend our gratitude to the WA as well as the Vietnam Water Sewage Association. Uh, thank you very much for organizing this platform so that we can share our experiences. And thank you very much for supporting businesses like a water company to recover from COVID-19. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you so much, Ms. Chiu Nu Dương Ngọc from Huế Water Company. And uh, thank you very much for sharing very valuable experience with us. Thank you again, Huế Water Company. And to continue, may we have for another polling questions, the last one for the webinar today. So the question number three is on the screen now. And with these questions, we'd like to know more from you. And for this one, you may choose several different options, the multiple choice question. The question is, what is the knowledge or support that you would like to share or receive from the domestic and foreign water companies? So here, uh, you know, the question is very important to us so that we can design the upcoming webinars and supporting program in the upcoming time. So again, the question is, what is the knowledge and support that you would want to share or receive 
from the other domestic and international water companies. So here there are the choices. First, guidelines on incident management. Second, guidelines on safety and health conditions at workplace for the operators. And next, the communication plan uh, for the employees and staff. Next one is uh, the supply chain risk management plan. The next one is the financial incentive for the customers in need. The next one is the impact assessment on business operations. And the next one is the uh, posters or side boats on COVID-19 at the workplace. So around 30 seconds are now for you to answer the questions. Thank you very much for completing the polling questions. So this is our summary of the polling. And as you could see that many companies have had the same interest, that is to receive more knowledge and transfer of knowledge and sharing uh, from the other companies on the uh, risk management of the chemical supply chain and business impact assessment. So these are the two areas that you are specifically interested in. So we will work with the VYC in order to find out the relevant source of information to share with you. And thank you again for participating in the poll. And now we'd like to announce that due to the time constraints, uh, although we have received many questions from the participants uh, through the Q&A and the chat box, but due to the time constraints, uh, we are very sorry that we cannot have the panel discussion that was originally included in the tentative agenda. But instead, we'd like to invite Dr. Nguyen Hong Tien representing the Vietnam Water Supply and Sewage Association with the concluding remarks. And after that, we'd like to invite Mr. Paul Smith, the director of AWA, uh, to have conclusion to the webinar. So over to Mr. Tien now, please. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, of course. Okay. So ladies and gentlemen, after two and a half hour, we have complete, we have successfully completed the international webinar on the water sector and we could learn a lot about the COVID-19 and the challenges due to the COVID-19 on our companies in the water sector. We could also learn a lot about the approaches uh, by the Australian and Vietnamese water companies in their doing business and in production and providing services to the customers during the COVID-19 pandemic. And uh, we also heard from the Vietnamese uh, domestic uh, water company that although they were facing a lot of challenges and difficulties, they uh, still uh, managed and tried to support the communities and would like to express our sincere thanks to the Australian government for your support uh, before, during and uh, you know, uh, during this time of the COVID-19 especially in uh, the organization of the webinar today, we'd like to thank uh, the Australian Water Association, Mr. Paul, and all the colleagues uh, for your technical support for this webinar and um, for your inputs to this webinar. Especially, would like to thank the Australian Embassy in Vietnam uh, for your interest in the water sector and uh, for your assistance to the water uh, sector in Vietnam in the recent years and uh, we are very much hoping to receive further assistance from you in the coming term. 
So the cooperation and partnership between the two countries in responding to this COVID-19 pandemic, especially through the transfer of knowledge and the sharing of experience is very important, very meaningful and very fruitful to all of us. And I understand that there can be some uh, points or some arrangements of this webinar which are not yet relevant and convenient to everyone. We hope that next time we can have a better design for the webinars and would like to wish you all very good health and happiness and success and see you very soon in the upcoming uh, webinar. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Nguyễn Hồng Tiến from the Vietnam Water and Sewage Association. May I now invite Mr. Paul Smith, the International Director from Australian Water Association, towards the conclusion for the webinar. <laughs> Thank you to all of our speakers today from Thank Vietnam you. Australia for your high quality presentations. It is fantastic to see so many familiar faces uh, involved in AWA and VWSA's program over the many years. Thank you to all of our participants who have joined today. Your insights through the polling will be very useful in shaping future efforts that uh, allow VWSA and AWA to share COVID knowledge more broadly in the future. It is clear there are significant benefits from enhanced collaboration between our water sectors in managing COVID-19. And together, our water sectors can overcome this critical challenge uh, more effectively. Today's webinar is part of a broader program of AWA and VWSA to connect the Australian and Vietnam water sector. It builds from a long legacy of activities funded by DFAT over many years uh, and builds on our water utility partnerships, our partnerships to share technology innovation, to share policy and regulation, and to facilitate enterprise partnerships. AWA and VWSA are now exploring wider opportunities to connect our water sectors, not only in COVID and technology and knowledge sharing, but any other areas. I encourage all of you to reach out to VWSA and NSOS with your ideas on how we can work together uh, in supporting our water sectors. Finally, I must pay a very special thanks to uh, Hui and Miss Ha, Hui from AWA and Miss Ha from the VWSA for organising this uh, webinar today. There's a tremendous amount of work that goes on behind the scenes. Um, and uh, of course, they're sometimes fraught with technical issues, but I'm very proud of uh, we um, and very thankful for VWSA's support over the years. Your efforts may indeed save lives down the track. So thank you very much again. Thank you, VWSA. Thank you, Benang. Uh, thank you, uh, NSUS. And thank you to all our speakers. Xin cảm ơn ông Paul Smith ạ. Um, kính thưa quý vị, uh, sau thời gian thì cũng... Uh... Thank you, Mr. Paul Smith and ladies and gentlemen. After two and a half hours, now we have come to the end of the webinar. Uh, we could learn a lot and we have had a lot of the useful information that has been shared and uh, we also learned about the way to organize the other webinars in the future. If you have any further question, uh, please contact us at Vietnam Water and Sewage Association and we can forward your questions to the guest speakers and then we'll uh, send their answers to you. So once again, thank you very much for your participation and for your input to the webinar today, especially our special thanks go to the guest speakers. And uh, thank you very much and see you very soon.